Hallelujah. Now, Father, we lift our hands in heaven. Surrender. We surrender to your will and not our own. For our hope, our strength, and our life is in you. Grant us revelation, impartation, and manifestation. That it's no longer we that live, but you that live. With wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug and tell them it's your night. Hallelujah. How's everybody? Oh, it's a good night to... Amen. It's a wonderful night to die. (laughs) How many of y'all know God's on a move? That he is. Big time. Big time. Everybody say big time. You know, so many times we don't realize that there's a move of God just because we're expecting God to move the way he, we want him to. But there is a move of God. There's a move of God that's happening. And that's why he's drawing all men onto him. There's drawing all men onto him. And, and in this, one of the things that, remember we talked about the area that um, he's establishing priesthood because one of the things is the whole world is in the wilderness and in the wilderness and the body of Christ is in the wilderness. He begins to establish priesthood and the priest is one who ministers to the Lord. And that's where the praise and worship goes up. And there is more and more praise and worship going up right now than ever before. In fact, there's more praise and worship going up to the Lord than there ever has been. And, and one of the things that I had a vision, even while we were praising and worshiping, because sometimes I don't understand what God has given me, the fullness, until things, until we're more in the spirit. And, and one of the things that I saw is the praise and worship was the same thing of everybody walking around the walls of Jericho. And, and in this praise and worship, except for the area of um, going in, and, and, and what, letting the walls fall to go into the enemy's camp, what's happening is the, the Jericho is filled with God's presence and glory. And by walking around, and, and as this praise begins to praise, and more and more, I'm telling you, I saw it was almost like the walls of Jericho come down, and water is just, whoosh, and there was such a mighty move of God. There was a holy visitation. And I'm telling you, we must get ready for this. There is a holy visitation coming like never before. Like never before. And in one aspect, it's almost like frightening because of the area where God is trying to get his people ready. Because this holy visitation that is coming, you'll either flow with it or get moved out with it. It's the same thing when the priest went into the most holy place. When they went into the most holy place in the tabernacle of God, there had to be sanctification. They had to go through the rituals then. They had to be cleansed. Because when they went into that last veil, the Holy of Holies, and stood before the Ark of the Covenant, and if they missed anything, they died. You'd hear a thunk and a bell, bing. And you'd pull them out because there'd be a rope around their ankle. Everybody was afraid that they missed something. (laughs) Priests were afraid to go into the most holy place. There was that reverence to God. And God is bringing his reverence back like never before. Not a plane of a church, not a plane of a religion, but of a relationship and the desire that you want to be clean to stand before him. There's a cleansing going on. There's a shaking going on and all over the place. There's an area where he's looking for those who are totally committed, not half committed. Who are not yoked with ungodliness, but are yoked with the anointing. Who are servants of the anointing, not servants of self. There's a mighty move of God coming and we must be ready. That's why there's the shaking going on in every area. That's why judgment is in the house of God. You're seeing judgment. You're seeing all kinds of things happening in the world. What's happening? God is shaking things. This is a move of God. 
what, what, you know, sometimes we see ungodliness manifesting more and more. And we're going, oh my God. No, it's God. He's exposing it more. Remember, his, his desire is to rescue, not lose. Rescue. He holds back his judgment because he knows he'll lose them if he judges them. So there's a holy visitation coming. And there's got to be a preparation for this holy visitation. It is a move of God for the harvest. It is the move of God for the harvest. And that's something that we must start crying out to, to the Lord. Lord, bring your holy visitation. Holy visitation. Would you turn to Luke 19, please? Everybody okay? Good. You know, that's why it's so important to, in, in these times is to, you know, we're to keep ourselves, check ourselves, examine ourselves, judge ourselves to the Lord stands before us all the time. Maintaining that fear of God, that reverence to God. And, and, and in this, if we'll, if we'll judge ourselves and keep ourselves, we won't have to be concerned about what happens when, we, when that move comes or truly standing before him. In Luke 19 and verse 37, is everybody there? Then as he, Jesus, was drawing near the descent of Mount, the Mount of Olives. Now I love it where it's, he always talks about the Mount of Olives because uh, and, and the Mount of Olives is where he's going to return. In fact, he gathered his, his, his people together and he was transfigured and, on all, and, and all of these things that happened in the Mount of Olives. Now, of course, we know what olives are used for, right? They're crushed for what? Oil, the anointing. And, and he told his disciples in the, that in the last days um, that uh, he would return. But he, when he grabbed, he, he gathered all of his disciples and he began to speak to them from the Mount of Olives about the last days. And, and from that, he also shared that he would return there at the Mount of Olives. So in this, he's talking and he's descending has everybody got this? He's descending from the where? Mount of Olives. Everybody see that? And he was drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. They had what? Seen. Saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and he said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come when your enemies will build an embarkment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of visitation. In other words, because they didn't understand, they, they were so caught up in religiosity. They were so caught up in works. They were so caught up in other things that a holy visitation was already standing in front of them. And they missed it. And he said, because you've missed it, now things will be hidden from you. And now you'll have to go through hell on earth. Amen? Amen? You have to go through all of these things because you missed my visitation. Now, the time of visitation is multiple meaning because sometimes it means a time you must know the shift of the spirit. It's in the area of knowing how the spirit is shifting, how he's moving. What's the next thing, you know? And that's why it's so important about praying in the spirit and seeking God because the Bible says that the anointing will tell you things to come. 
So we should have a witness in our spirit about what, this, what the anointing is teaching us because we don't want man to teach us. We want the anointing to teach us because if the anointing teaches us, we'll know all things. So in this, God has always shared with us that he would tell us things to come and prepare us. See, the reason for the anointing and when God begins to pour out and, uh, and uh, his spirit upon us and get refreshed and get filled and, and get freed up and all kind of, it's not just to be free. It's to be free to obey. Has everybody got it? See, because the anointing breaks the yoke. By breaking the yoke, you're going to obey God. And by obeying God, you're going to see things to come. You'll be able to hear him in clarity. You'll be able to see him more. There'll be more vision and dreams and, and impartations. There'll be a witness in your spirit. There'll be an area of more revelation where he exposes and instructs. Where he exposes and in, instructs. And in this, he is preparing his church for a holy visitation. All over. Is everybody okay? So in this time of visitation, we must understand the shift of the Spirit. It is a visitation from the presence of God. It's more visitations of angels. It's more visitations, more revelations, more impartations. And one of the things he said to them, it, you know, if you really knew what was happening, and because of what, if you would have really caught the visitation, you'd have had peace. See, when people miss God, and it's the devil's ploy, he wants you to miss God. They walk in torment. They walk in confusion. They walk in fear. See, that's why the anointing must be caught. Why? Because you want to catch the visitation, don't you? You don't want to miss that visitation from God. And he's going to visit you in any way he chooses to. It can come any way. And we don't want to miss it. That's why it's important to be consistent. That's why it's important to seek him every morning. That's why it's important to do your warfare. Why? Because the devil's going to try to sway you any way he, you, he can for you to miss a holy visitation from God. How many of y'all want a holy visitation? Well, hallelujah. If you want a holy visitation, you must die. Oh man, I don't like that word. Then you're too alive. You must die to yourself because he is the resurrection of life. See, the more dead you are, the more visitation you'll have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, understand that a holy visitation, it, it not only brings um, exposure and in, instruction and so forth, but it brings change. It brings change. Amen. Something that you and I can't do. We can't change. And you can't change somebody else. So quit trying. You're just wasting your breath, losing your en energy, and the devil's got you all caught up trying to change someone else and you'll miss the visitation from God. It's going to cause change. It's going to cause rescue. It's going to cause healing. It's going to bring an impartation. It will bring warning. And it will restore the fear of God. And there is something else it will bring. Judgment. All in one visitation. <laughs> it's all it takes is one holy visitation and everything happens. Go to Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19, verse 23. Oh, uh, let's go to, uh, yeah, good, 20. <laughs> Would you read it? Listen to counsel and receive what? Instruction. That you may be wise in your latter days. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. <laughs> I love it when I hear all these plans people make. Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Praise God. 
Because if you're truly seeking God, you're going to allow God to do whatever. So plans always change. So I don't make plans. <laughs> My wife doesn't like when she when I she says, Are you coming home from dinner? I say, If the Lord wills. <laughs> Come on, i got to know whether we're making dinner or not. Hey, if the Lord wills. <laughs> Never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's read 21 again. Now don't be driving your families crazy. So you know what I'm saying. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. You know, there's many times where we have good intentions. And man, we want to do things for the Lord. Everybody wants to do a great thing for the Lord that's in love with the Lord. But then when you start doing these, thinking that you're getting ready to do these great things, all of a sudden something changes. And that's where you must allow that release to release it and let God's will stand. Because see, desires can speak louder than the voice of God sometimes. Sometimes somebody has a desire to do something so badly that they'll actually flush out the voice of God and listen to that desire more. So there's many, everyone in this room has had a desire to do something specifically for God. And then he changed it. And it may not be because it's not God's time yet. There's a little training he wants to do. There's another path. But, you know, we want to cut across the front lawn to get to the front door. But God's going to cause you to go up the sidewalk, up the driveway, and up the other little sidewalk to the front door. He won't miss any nook or cranny. Why? Because all of that is for your training so that when you get to the front door, you changed. See, he must change you to fulfill that will. You don't change... While you're doing the will, you get changed to fulfill the will. Then the will happens. And while you're doing that will, he's getting ready for another one. And another one. And another one. And as you're willing to change with him, see what's happening now, he's coming with visitations. And visitations are bringing exposure and instruction. Is everybody okay? Praise God. And that's why it's so important about cooperation, isn't it? But the enemy will try to deceive you every way he can. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? He tries to hold you back so you miss the visitation from God. Okay, in verse 22. Ooh. What is, it, what is desired in a man is kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord... Leads to what? Life. And he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with what? Evil. Whoa. So here, I mean, this is powerful because it's saying if you maintain the fear of the Lord, you won't be visited by evil. So you'll have a holy visitation, won't you? Does everybody got it? In other words, you're maintaining that the fear of God means that evil isn't going to overtake you. It doesn't mean you won't be tempted. But if you're maintaining a reverence and the fear of God, you're maintaining God's presence, aren't you? And you will always have exposure and instruction. So evil won't overtake you. That's what the Bible says. The world is under the sway of the wicked one, but he won't touch us. Only if you let him. So the fear of the Lord leads to life. In other words, we abide in satisfaction. We are fulfilled. And, and, and in this, we always want to be ready for a visitation. The Bible even says that even angels come, right? As a humanite. But they're actually humanites. You know? but they come. And, and, and you never know who, what stranger you're talking to. It could be an angel. I've had... I've spoken to a couple already, and I didn't, and I realized that they were angels when I, and then they were gone. But in this, you never know when you're going to be visit. You just don't know. Those are holy visitations, and they come to try to direct you, or sometimes they'll come to test you. 
And the reason why they're testing you is because God's getting ready to do something. God doesn't do anything in the area without preparation. That's why he told the disciples after Jesus was with them for over three years and then he commanded them not to leave the upper room until what? They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So here they were with Jesus for over three years and he said, listen, man, don't leave. I want you, I command you to wait for the Holy Spirit so that you'll be empowered so your scales will come off. So all of the anointing will back you. That was a command. In other words, he won't send you unless he's prepared you. And too many people go out without being prepared because they're led by a desire instead of by the spirit. And they fall into trouble later. Or they begin to build something out of intellect instead of out of the anointing. And it's different. Is everybody okay? First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. In verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's read it. Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in a day of what? Visitation. In other words, maintain good conduct and preparation for what? Day of visitation. That they may glorify God. Why? Because you've maintained. The Bible says that when he appears, we'll be like him. Yes. In Psalm 17. Is everybody there? (laughs) You know, that's why the Lord says, if my people will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and pray for their nation, I would heal it. I would heal it. In other words, I would bring a holy visitation. Healing comes with holy visitation. I think he's stirring up right now. You know, now praying for their nation. First of all, you repent, get yourself right. Then you begin to pray for your nation. Now let me share, praying for your nation is, oh Lord, uh, is not, oh Lord, bring revival to this nation. That's not, that's a part of it. But there's more. You must warfare. Because there are things that are preventing the flow of the Spirit. Everybody got it. In other words, Lord, anyone that's in office anywhere through this whole country that is coming against your will and persecuting your people, expose and remove. And put your servants in office. In Jesus' name. Man, I pray that every morning. I not only do it for our government, I do it for the military, for the media, professional athletes, um, intelligent, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, like the FBI and those guys. And Man, I'm going after them all. I want, I want everyone that's coming against God's will and persecuting his people to be exposed and removed and put God's servants in their place. They'll either turn or get out of the way. And it's our responsibility to pray those things. Not these wishy-washy, soulish prayers. Oh, Lord, please help us. Oh, Lord, touch, touch, and touch. And forget that, man. It's time to fight. You are a soldier, not a soulish head. Hello. It's time to fight. You must fight. It will bring the move of God. They fought. Man, you read all history and everything about a move of God. Everybody was fighters. They fasted and prayed. They they interceded. They fought. They came against the powers of darkness. How did the walls of Jericho come down? They fought, didn't they? This is a fight going on. A big fight going on. And there's a holy visitation that's coming because God is raising up warriors more and more. He's calling them from all over. He's visiting people. 
People are getting visited by the Lord, baptized in the Holy Spirit, even while they're sleeping. Things are happening all over. God is raising up a quick army so he can do a quick move and rescue as many as possible. And Psalm 17, is everybody there? Are you there yet? <laughs> uh, verse 3. Would you read it? You have what? Tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and found nothing. I have purposed. I have what? I have what? Purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. Ooh. Concerning the works of men by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. But it says that he visited him and he tested him. Does everybody see that? He visited him and tested him. You know, right now, many people are trying to hold on to their materialism. Man, that's all I own. You don't own nothing. It ain't yours. It's his. You must allow God to build the house. Hello? People are trying to work day and night to try and save what they have when it's not theirs from the beginning. I'm telling you, if you give it to God and let it go and let God take care of it. See, that's when you turn it over to the Lord. You turn it over to the Lord. I'll give you this. Here, take it. He bought you, didn't he? You have a lifetime guarantee. Amen? Anything runs out, he'll replace it. And if he don't want to replace it, he just takes it. <laughs> and get everything brand new. It'll be in another realm, though. He tested us and he visited us in a night. That's what he says. And he's testing right now. He's shaking right now. He wants to know exactly who you're a servant of. He wants to know exactly where your heart is. What is first in your life? Him? Your possessions? Your family? What's first? And when you show him what truly is first, you know, there's so many times, I, you know, when we gather together in fellowship and so forth and, and, and Bible studies and your services, man, I mean, there's a visitation every time. I don't want to miss any. I don't want to miss a visitation at all. Because there's always some kind of, when there's a visitation from God, there's an impartation. And it's actually building us up, building us up for a huge visitation. One that you can't handle. I love those types. Psalm 8. Psalm chapter 8. And verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's read it. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which we have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? <laughs> and the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him. Do you see the word him? Is it capital? No, who is he talking about then? Hello. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. I love it. Everything's under your feet. So don't trip over them. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Whoa. See, even the angels freak out on how much God loves us. <laughs> They're like, man, what... What do you, what's with these people? <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> we're a mess. <laughs> we were a mess. 
You know, you ever wonder what, you know, because see, there were angels assigned to you already when you were born. And then when you were born again, the legion is assigned to you. And the purpose of those angels, come on, you all knew that when you were little, there was always some kind of somebody around you, your invisible friend, you know, that was there to protect you. You might have called them whatever. I called them mole watchers. And they tried to rescue me all the time. And I knew that they were angels or something, but I didn't know what their names were, so I called them mole watchers. And I called humans moles. Everybody's a mole. We got mole watchers. <laughs> I was unsaved. But there was some connection that I always wanted with the other side. You know, and, 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 I, and I know that they tried to rescue me all the time. And sometimes I would listen. And I just knew. And, and in this, God was always preparing. He was trying to get us to a place where we'd finally come to surrender. And allow him to have his way in our life all the way. He was trying to get us ready for a holy visitation. Because he don't mess with sin. He don't hang with disobedience. He doesn't touch rebellion. Stubbornness. Hard-headedness. He waits. That's why so many people are still going through the bushes, the thorn bushes. He'll drag you right through. You'll feel all the prickers and all the other stuff. And you're, man, when's things going to change, man? When you change. When you finally surrender and give it all to God. And he'll visit you. Now, he can visit you in any way he wants. He can visit you with a check. Hey, didn't he visit? Now think about this. In the wilderness, what did he visit them? He visited them. He came every morning. All right? He fed them food. It says, the Bible says that the Lord visited them with food. He visited them with water. They saw the glory of God. He had a visitation. Of the people there in the wilderness, the Israelites were there. They had a visitation of the cloud, glory, cloud, and the fire. They were visited. Yet, even though that they were visited, they chose to rebel and complain. That's why nobody could get near the tabernacle. In fact, there was one time when Moses had interceded for all the Israelites because the Lord said, all right, get everybody, get, pack your stuff and get your family out. I'm killing everybody. <laughs> and Moses was, no, Lord, don't do that. I said, I'm done with them. I'm going to kill them all. And Moses convinced God not to because they had a relationship. Ooh, I love it. Job 7. Of course, you know, Moses was, it's, the Bible says, the most humble man in the earth. He would have probably, if that would have happened with one of us, we would have probably said, go ahead and kill him. I'm with you, God. <laughs> Kill them all. <laughs> Let's start a whole new class. <laughs> Is everybody there? 717. Here we go again. What is a man that you should exalt? Exalt him. That you should set your heart on him. That you should visit him where? Every morning. Test him every moment. I love that. You want to be visited every morning? Expect to be tested every moment. <laughs> so everybody see that? See, even Job was discussing this. See, but there is a visitation every morning. He wakes you up. That's why you say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, another day of breath. Glory. Not, oh, no. You know, I get all these people to me, well, I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I didn't know there was a wrong side. In fact, I didn't know there was a right side. I know there's a left and right side. The only reason why people say they woke up on the wrong side of the bed is because they're miserable. And they touch agreement with the voice of the stranger immediately. They had a visitation from evil. 
And they chose to accept it instead of slap it out of the way and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. They say, good morning, devil. And the devil showed him a whole list they got to do that day. And he goes, oh, my God. I got to do all this stuff today. I don't have time for prayer. I don't have time to surrender. I don't have time to warfare. I gotta be, I can, I'll just do it on the way. You just miss a visitation. And your visitation will be delayed. Oh. See, the visitation in the morning, the reason why there is a testing, what God is trying to bring you, and now get this, what God is trying to bring you is a piece of his hidden treasure. In that visitation, there's a piece of his hidden treasure. It's what people call nuggets. That he imparts in you. And you know that you've been imparted with something and you don't know what it is yet. But it will come. You just don't know what it is, but you do. Oh, yes. Something's happened. I don't know what. I can't explain it. But I will. Go to Acts 15. Is everybody okay? Holy visitation. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, did I say 15? Well, it was 17. In verse 26. And it says, And he has made for, from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked. But now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So we know that there is a visitation coming that he is going to judge the whole world, isn't he? And remember, there's, we, we're talking about a holy visitation. And in this holy, the two greatest holy visitations that's going to happen in the wilderness, the greatest, not only besides the move of the Spirit for a harvest, but the greatest, because the greatest harvest is going to be the rapture. There will be the greatest holy visitation, the rapture. And, and then you're going to have the wrath, which is another holy visitation. So in these two, God is preparing us, isn't he? But there's going to be a holy visitation, a move of God very shortly. That is going to lead up more and more and more. It's going to bring more exposure, more instruction, and more unity. Is everybody okay? Uh, while we're here, go to Acts 15. And verse 12. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. See, God visits us to take us out from the world, doesn't he? See, even when you were saved, the Bible says no man comes through the Father unless he's what? Drawn. So there was a drawing, there was a visitation, and just in that part that God was drawing you so that you can get saved and come out from among them. Then the next great visitation at that time of holy visitation was by Holy Spirit, where you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, 
in this with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now what happens is we carry the presence of God and God uses his Holy Spirit to prepare others for a holy visitation. Is everybody okay? Go to Jeremiah 27. And verse 19. Ooh, no, verse 18. Would you read it? But if they are prophets, and if the word of the Lord is with them, let them now make what? Intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord, in the house of the king of Judah, and at Jerusalem, do not go to Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars, concerning the sea, concerning the carts, concerning the remainder of the vessels that remain in the city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take, when he carried away captive, Jechorian, son of, you know, and the, and the king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of the, Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem. They shall be carried to Babylon and there they shall be until the day that I what? Visit them, says the Lord. Then I will bring them up and restore them to this place. So in other words, things that go in captivity are staying in captivity until the Lord comes to visit them and get them out. We get calls about so many things, and there's just sometimes it's just like, you know, the only thing you can do is say, pray. Pray. And they're going, well, what do we do? What do we do? And it's like, you know what? You're going to have to wait on God to get you out. You're just going to have to wait on God. But so many times we want to move in the flesh right away, but God is saying, wait on me. Wait on me. And if we'll wait on him, he comes to rescue every time. Go to Exodus 20. You know, I think so many times we take these visitations nonchalantly. I don't think, uh, sometimes I think so many times when God visits us, it's just an area of, oh, nice. Or, in other words, they are holy visitations. Holy. Not just a thing to play with. They're holy visitations. And in them, there's got to, that's why he brings the fear of the Lord because the reverence of God, you know, which we know the fear of the Lord is reverence, respect, and honor. Reverence, respect, and honor. Reverence, respect, and honor. And that's what we should do with his presence, not only when his manifested presence isn't there, but even when it is there. Honor, respect, and reverence. And in Exodus chapter 20, is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Are you sure? Now read verse 4. It says, You shall not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the sea. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the what? Iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who what? Hate me. In other words, what he's saying is, if you're worshiping other things, you hate me. But I'm a believer. No, he says you hate me. Because there's other things between you and God. He says you hate me then. And by doing that, the Bible tells us in Hosea 4, 6, about rejecting the truth of the Lord, the knowledge of God. He'll direct, reject you for being priest. And by forgetting his law, he'll reject your children. Why is that? Because a curse comes down the family line. And in this, as this curse comes down the family line, you know, we've got to step back and that's where we've got to sever things and let God be God and, and not us be God. Because anything that's worked in the flesh is a curse. The Bible says, blesses a man who trusts in the Lord and curses a man who trusts in man. Anything that's worked in the flesh brings a curse. In other words, a curse is a legal document for the demonic forces. They have access to you to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So everybody got it? Hallelujah. So in this, we must be careful so that 
we're submissive to the Lord in every area, not works of the flesh so we don't bring a curse because it, he visits, it says he visits the iniquity. In other words, he, he sends a curse which gives demonic forces a legal right. Go to Ruth. Ruth. It's after Judges. Ruth, chapter 1. Now there was baby Ruth, and no. <laughs> oh, come on, loosen up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> In verse 6, now she arose with her daughter-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had what? Visit his people by what? Giving them bread. In other words, they were giving, giving them bread in, in, in this harvest. In other words, when harvest comes, it's also a representation of a visitation from the Lord. It's a visitation from God. Um, that's why God commanded the land to be established and, and, and taken care of in the area where it, it, you didn't use it, every all parts of it, and there was a time of rest with it. And it's the Sabbath, and it was the Sabbath of the land. And in that, that land got a chance to rest, and when it got a chance to rest, it would reestablish minerals and so then they would begin to plant there again, and God would allow a large harvest to come because of their obedience. So he would visit them even in the harvest. Is everybody okay? See, it was direct. So they went there because they had heard that God visit this place by giving them bread or bringing harvest. And again, that's the same thing as what was going on in the wilderness, wasn't it, in, with the Jews? Amen? Praise God. Now, I want to go back to Luke 19 for a minute. Well, you know, Ruth had to be a baby at some time, right? <laughs> In Luke 19, verse 45. Now, you know, in this we just shared um, in the first scripture uh, uh, that we read tonight, in, which was 37 to 44, and it talked about them missing the visitation of the Lord at the time of the visitation, right? And then it says right after that, after the Lord wept over Jerusalem, and then it says in, in verse 45, then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him and were unable to do anything for all the people were very attentive to hear him. So in this, understand that, in other words, when he said that they missed the visitation, and what did he do? He went into the temple and started cleaning things out. And that's what God begins to do with us. Um, again, I want you to understand that in this move, in this holy move, in the holy visitation of God, he begins to clean us out. He begins to shake, tip things over. He's not looking for an offering for any change coming out of your pocket. He's going to tip you over and remove anything. And that's what things are shaking. Anything that is not steadfast on him is going to be exposed. Why? Because God is visiting his people. Jesus came as a holy visitation, goes into the temple and starts cleaning up. Why? Because he's looking for a place to dwell. See, so even the visit, holy visitation will come in preparation to that. God is looking for a place to dwell. Is everybody okay? First Peter chapter 4. Holy visitation is coming. First Peter chapter 4 verse 17. For the time has come for judgment to begin where? At the house of God, and it begins with us first. For what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God 
commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. So we know God is cleaning up. Clean, it's clean up time. Holy visitation, preparation. Again, we are in a wilderness. There's going to be a holy visitation and it's going to lead up to the rapture and the wrath. Up to the rapture and the wrath. Now, the holy visitation for the rapture will be for the body of Christ. The holy visitation for the wrath will be the world. Matthew 25. Matthew 25 and verse 31. It says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them from one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep and from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right and on his right hand, and the goats on his left hand, and he will judge them both. He will judge them both right then and there because he will have a holy visitation. Now, I want to just quickly share with you, because the the nations that obeyed and God was their their nation, they will be blessed. The ones that come against will be cursed. Now, if you begin to look at some of the powerful visitations that happened even from the beginning you know we know that abraham he was visited by the lord wasn't he amen he had a holy visitation in fact the lord came with two angels and and he came and he and he and he had a promised seed didn't he i I want you to understand that there's an impartation and a holy visitation all the time and it's something to bring birth and to expand his kingdom for harvest, and to plant more seed. So, even right from the beginning when Abraham was visited by God, of course we know Adam was created by God and walked with him, but then they blew it. Then the Lord had to restore things. But in the visitation of Abraham came the promised seed called Isaac. And and in this, there was a covenant by circumcision. And that was a blood covenant. And then Moses was visited by the Lord uh, to rescue the promised seed, Israel. And there was also a circumcision, but what they started then, because the tabernacle was built, and they started animal sacrifice as maintaining, covering sin and maintaining covenant. Does everybody understand that? And then Mary had a holy visitation and conceived with the promised seed. And birthed Christ, the Christ, right? Who was the holy visitation. So everybody got it. And he visited Israel. The nation that was the promised. And the Jews. And he was taken. Now wait a minute. And and before he was taken, he visited the Jews in Israel who began to record things. And when he was taken, the Holy Spirit was now the holy visitation. Has everybody got it? The Spirit of Christ, which came to his disciples. And then God chose Paul to bring a visitation to the Gentiles. Now, so it came from the Jews to the Gentiles. And it began to spread and, and them teaching them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit for not only salvation, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit for a holy visitation. So everybody got it. And now it's spread all over the world, isn't it? So the Holy Spirit now is the holy visitation to go globally. And that's why everything, re, uh, visitations are happening all over the world. There's more unity in the body of Christ. Um, I was just talking to somebody that was going to Egypt. And they said that a whole town in Egypt is nothing but born-again believers. And a place in Egypt, and they're going, going, that somebody was my cousin, I just remembered. And I was talking to her today, and she's going to Egypt. 
And she said, the whole town, there's a whole town in Egypt that is born again believers. And I guess um, there, there's an area near there that um, is the dump sites. So they're going over there to minister to all kinds of people and bring the presence of God, bring truth. So even in the area of man carrying the presence of God, it's bringing available a holy visitation. But again, the one that I'm talking about tonight, this holy visitation that is truly coming is going to be huge. It's going to be enormous. It's going to increase to where you can't even, you can't, you, you won't be able to. <laughs> By the time you try to figure it out, you'll be caught up. And that holy visitation to continue to go all the way up to the rapture and then the wrath of God. Is everybody okay? Now, this is powerful because you know, even in the covenant, which was a circumcision and an animal sacrifice, then there was the man sacrifice, which brought covenant. That man sacrifice was the Christ, which allows visitations. Would you turn to First Timothy chapter three? So God is preparing us. First Timothy chapter three. In verse 14, would you read it with me? These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly, but I am delayed. I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on into the world, and received up to glory. Hallelujah. That he could visit us with his glory. Now we know that the last one of the end time visitations is going to be in Revelation 22. So go there. Here's the holy visitation. In Revelation 22. In verse 6. And he said to me, These words are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of this prophecy, of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He was unjust, let him be unjust still. He was filthy, let him be filthy still. He was righteous, let him be righteous still. And he was holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, it may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs, sorcerers, sexual, immoral, and murderers, and idolaters. Whoever loves and practices a lie, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, No, I want you to get this because it says the spirit and the bride. This scripture is associated with out the body of Christ on earth. Because it's the Lord, amen, and the bride, the body of Christ, saying, come. In other words, come from the earth. Because we're with the Lord now. Does everybody see this? So it says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears says, 
Come and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away the words of this book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testified these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. So again, I want to share with you about the holy visitation. I really believe right now that the, all of the shaking and everything that's going on, remember God has the last say. And we must be prepared. We must be prepared. We must continue to fight for the life of Christ. Let God be God. He'll make a way. He's going to visit the house, his house, with prosperity. He's going to visit his house with power. He's going to visit his house with glory. He's going to visit his house with revelation and truth. He's going to visit his house so his house will visit the world. See, God's return always comes through the body of Christ first before he personally returns. That's why there must be a holy visitation through the body of Christ and preparation for the Holy One who will return. So I want to encourage everyone, get ready. Get ready, be ready in season and out. Be bold, stand strong. Whatever God's trying to get rid of out of your life, let Him take it. It's time. Sanctification is essential. Being separated unto him. Allowing him to build the house. So we don't work in the flesh. Amen. Everybody okay? Are you ready? Get ready. Praise God. Father we give you all the glory, honor and praise. We are honored and blessed to be your children. And to be alive at this time. Lord I pray for each and every one. Clarity and discernment. That we may be prepared. Lord. <laughs> If need be, put us on the, <laughs> on the potter's wheel. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That we may be ready. <laughs> Cause us to hear your word. Cause us to be ready. Cause us, Lord, in every area. That we may be totally submitted, committed, and obedient. In preparation of your holy visitation. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.